Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm just going to talk for a bit. I don't really know what I'm going to be talking about yet. What I do know is I'm hearing a lot of stuff and it's making me think. I've been having talks with people about publishing and talks with people about the difference between the big five uh, mid-list publishers and self-publishing. Sitting back and hearing what people's concerns are with each thing, it's really a trip because everyone has preconceived notions about how things should go and what they expect from publishers and what they expect from their careers and everything. And I'm not saying that any of these things are wrong. I'm just saying that a lot of these things that people assume are not real. They're not true. I think it's hard because I'm sure I fall through this sometimes, like where I will get some information like five years ago and think that that information is still relevant. And the publishing industry changes a lot whenever the fuck it feels like it. And one thing that has made all of this happen faster is Amazon. Amazon changes whenever the fuck they feel like it. And when they change, everyone else has to fucking figure it out. Whether you are a self-published author, whether you are with a, a mid list publisher or whether you're with the big five now i think the mid list publisher will do more due diligence to figure out how to solve the problem more than a self-publisher and definitely more than a big five publisher the reason being is because the mid list publisher probably and not all the time but if they use amazon if amazon is one of their main markets. If they don't understand algorithms, they're fucked and they're going to go under. But there are a lot of publishers out there, mid-list publishers, who rally against Amazon and do not sell their products there. So the plus side with that is, is that whatever market they end up in, it's a smaller market. It's a smaller pool. So as long as there are people in that pool, their books will be seen. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's a little bit different. The other side to that is, is with Amazon, um, you have a lot more eyeballs in the store. Not on your product, but in the store. And if you can figure out how to get those eyeballs on your product you have a very good chance of selling to those people. But some of the stuff I've been hearing people say lately, I don't know if people have been like like Googling shit and like coming up with like articles from like Buzzfeed from like 2014 or something. But a lot of the stuff I hear people say is just very, very like old. And I don't know the best way to fix this. Like there are uh, mailing lists you can be a part of that update shit all the time and let you know um, what's going on and stuff. Again, you have to find those, and I'm not really on a lot of them. I am, I'm, I am on a couple of them. But then the thing you have to worry about with those things is most of those people are selling a service or a product. So when you hear them talk about something new going on at Amazon, it's usually... Like, so they can sell you their software that does something, okay? So what that means is the only time you're going to get an email from them discussing something is if they found out a way to fix it. Or at least found out a way to make you think they found out a way to fix it. So that's really complicated and difficult to take care of. Oh, and then I didn't say this, but the reason why the self-published author isn't as quick to fix like problems with Amazon and shit is because it's a lot of fucking work and a lot of research. 
And most motherfuckers don't have time for that shit. I don't know. It's just, it's really bizarre. It's really bizarre. It would be great to figure out a way to handle things without Amazon. And this is where talk about the importance of being in select with Amazon. And honestly, I just, I just don't know. I have a lot of stuff in select and some things that aren't in select. The thing is, the things that I have that aren't in select, I, I typically don't have other places. And I probably should. But the thing is, is that when I've been across all other platforms, the amount of money I generated from those other platforms was so minuscule that I was almost making more money off of my KU reads than I was off of my sales through like Apple and Google, you know? So it's just like, what's the fucking point, dude? I think the thing that a lot of people need to do, including myself, I'm going to fucking throw myself into this. I'm going to, I'm going to put myself in this fucking fire. You need to have a release strategy, like a marketing strategy, and you need to stick to it. And if something isn't working, if you realize through your research, because the only research that you could really like chew into is the research that you do based off of your own sales. So if you are noticing that something is not working on say Amazon, you need to come up with a new plan and say, what can I do with this property? Because the thing that I don't know if people really get about the books they write is that your books become passive income. You know, over the course of years, you could write an, a number of books. And each year, those books will continue to bring in income for you. And if you have a lot of books, you don't need to sell a shit ton of each book in order to live comfortably. You know what I'm saying? You need to sell a decent amount of all your books. Do you, do you get where, where I'm coming from here? Like, you don't need to have a bestseller if you've written 30 books. Like, you don't need your book to be number one in every category on Amazon, okay? So you don't need a bestseller. You just need a bunch of books that sell. I wonder what the numbers should be for this to make sense. I feel like pricing, like I fucked up on my pricing. I feel like I need to go through all my shit and um, reprice a bunch of stuff. Maybe I should do a video on pricing. Like here's another thing. Like with Etsy, if you sell books on Etsy, I'm really wanting to come off of Etsy. And the reason why I don't is because it's so easy. And I make more excuses than all the assholes in the world. And basically, I want to have my own shop on my website, but I don't like GoDaddy and I haven't switched over yet. Ugh. So I guess that's November's problem. I have to do it. Etsy takes kind of a huge cut the way they do their shipping is so fucked that um i'm really wanting off of there like for instance this might seem like a stupid problem but i'm going to explain it to you it pisses me off for packages that or orders that are over 15 dollars on etsy they require require you to put a tracking number on those domestic orders, okay? That's fine. I don't mind doing that. The problem is, is that they do not charge the person who's made an order over $15 for tracking. So then that comes out of my pocket. And some of you might be going, well, just like fix your shipping to include tracking. That's fine, and I could do that, but to me, if someone is purchasing something on my shop, and then they see like $5 added to their shipping, on top of what the shipping is anyway, they might get a little pissed off. I would get pissed off. So, the, the whole thing's fucking stupid. 
so the only way I can do that and have it not be like damaging to my wallet when I send stuff out is to send stuff out media mail on domestic orders because you get a tracking number for that. The problem with that is, is that it takes a long time, like sometimes like 10 days to get the product. And so then I feel bad about that. And then I'm like, well, shit, like, should I feel bad that it's taking them 10 days to get the product? Or should I feel bad that I'm going to charge them an extra five bucks for tracking? You know, I don't know. Just the whole thing's fucking stupid. Like tracking is good for any orders you do, but it is, it costs more than it used to. And I don't know if it's because of that dude that got turned to the postmaster general but um, I was sending out, like, like it was something like, it was a package of two chapbooks. And the shipping on it was like three bucks. And then, and that was what I charged the person. And then I asked for a tracking number on a first class letter, because that's the envelope it goes into or whatever. And it was over five bucks. It was like five twenty or something fucking stupid like that. And I was like, what? Like that's fucking ridiculous, dude. So long story over. I just I don't want to fucking do that anymore. So now I feel like I'm just procrastinating with my day. So um I should probably fuck off and get some work done. But um it's just an interesting thing, I guess. I don't fucking know. I guess the whole thing here is, like, if there's a moral to this bitch, it's figure out, like, if you're going to write a book, if you're going to take the time to put into a piece of art like that, figure out what you want to do with it. How do you want to sell it? Where do you want it to be? How do you want to get this book out to the masses? And then figure out the best way to do that. Like, once you figure out where you want it sold, figure out the strategy to sell that thing. But don't just do it blindly, because it's just going to fucking bum you out, you know? You're going to feel like, I'm just screaming into the void and no one's listening. Like, here, here's the thing. Self-published author, when you hear that term, most people just think, oh, that means you can write whatever you want and put it out whenever you feel like it. You know, you're your own boss. You're just a writer. What a self-published author means is that you are the publisher. You are the author, but you are also the publisher. So what do publishers do? Publishers do marketing. They do sales. They um, analyze figures. You, you hear what I'm saying. Like, publishers do work. Don't negate the publisher part of self-published author. Okay, that's, that's the best advice I could give. So, whatever, I'm out. Keep buying my books. Time hard, everybody. And I will see you later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.